This short demo covers the day-to-day -day data entry tasks in Donation and the creation of your first charitable receipt. Once you have done the basic initial setup, which was covered in the previous demo, you can start entering your data. Most of your work can be done on this one main window. To enter a donor, click the New button or press F3 on your keyboard. Let's enter some data for this donor, starting with the last name. For US users, you enter the postal code in this field. That's enough data for now. Press Enter or F10 or click this Save button to save the donor. Now that donor has appeared over here on the donor list. Let's enter one more. The optional donor category fields that we didn't set up yet or use allow you to classify your donors in two different ways. You can set up values in them using this Add New field in the drop-down or after we save you can go to Maintenance, Donor Category 1 and Donor Category 2. To enter anything in a saved donor record, just click into any of the fields and start editing. Now that we have a couple of donors, let's enter their first donations. Select the desired donor from the donor list, then either click F2 or just click into the field where you want to start editing. You can type in the date of the donation or click this drop down button beside it to pick a different date. You use Tab to move from field to field. If this donation is for the general category, there's nothing to do in this field. Otherwise, suppose it's for the building fund. You can drop down the list with the drop down arrow, or just press the first letter of the category's name. I'm going to press B for building fund. As you can see, this field also has an add new option. You don't have to enter anything in the check number paid by field, but if you want to track this sort of information, you can type in a check number or anything else or select from their drop-down list. Let's say they paid cash and you want to record that fact. I can select it from the list or I can just type the first letter and matches start appearing. Most users don't use the description field except for gifts in kind. If you don't need it at all, you can turn off its display in the Maintenance Main Window Options window. Press Enter or F10 or click Save here to save this donation. Now to find another donor like Mary Smith, if you have a lot of donors in your list, just type the first letter or letters of her name. As you see, as I press S, it goes to the first S. If there were more like that, I could press SM, and there we are. If you use envelope numbers, you can also type the number to immediately go to the donor with that number. Now let's enter a donation for her, which she wants to be split between two categories, $20 for general, and $20 for special fund. We'll enter that as if it was two donations. I'll enter 20 here, press enter, and then click into this next empty field, $30, S for special fund, and enter to save that. And you notice it used the default date of the same last date that we used for previous donations. And we ignored the check number paid by for that. Okay, so we've entered a few donations. Let's see a receipt. Assuming you've paid and this is no longer the evaluation version, all of the receipt options will be available. For now, let's just create a sample receipt that doesn't get saved in the database. You can enhance this receipt by adding your logo in the top right corner and you can also use a bitmap field for the signature here. Details are in the help. Now that was the receipt for Canada. Let's see what it looks like for the USA. We'll go back to Receipt Options, change it to USA, and now we do have to choose one of these options about intangible religious benefit, which is explained in the help. Save that, Receipt, Current Donor Sample, and there's the version with the appropriate wording for the USA. You can also notice that when we switch to the USA, this check number prompt here changed to the US spelling C-H-E-C-K instead of the Canadian spelling. For churches and other places of worship, there's a help page and another video demo on features for churches, explaining several features that will help you, including a quicker way to enter your weekly collections as a batch that starts with this button here, Batch Entry. Now let's take a quick look at reports. When you're new to the program, the easiest way to find your way around the reports is with the report browser from this menu option, although you can also pick reports individually 
off of these various submenus of different types of reports. And once you know the reports, you'll probably do that most of the time. But for now, let's use the report browser. You'll see that we can drill down through the reports, and when we click on a specific one, it gives a description of it and what it prompts on. Let's do a report you'll probably use regularly after entering donations on one date. So one date donations, and then there are several options, but let's do details and summary. When we run it, it prompts with the date that you want to report on, which again will be the last date you did entry for. Click OK, and there you go, the list of all the donations entered on that date with the individual details plus the summary totals by the funds or donation categories. There are many options in the buttons on this window, and as usual, you could click Help to learn all about them. Before we exit for the day, make a database backup off of your hard drive, for instance, on a USB memory key. So we'll go to Backup Database. This is showing me the key, which is the last location I backed up to, and just save that. There are also options for emailing backups and internet backups. If you don't make backups off of your hard drive, you might as well not use the program, because hard drives die way too often, and you don't want to lose all of your data. That's all you need to know for your basic day-to-day -day usage of the donation program.